All right, this is May. May um, has some uh, boundary issues. She's got some other issues as well. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can teach your dog to uh, respect an invisible boundary, like to stay outside the kitchen. Now, one of the things I was talking to the guardians about off camera is what rules does May have? And May really doesn't have any rules. And when your dog doesn't have any rules, it can very quickly see you as a peer. And if it sees you a peer or an equal, then listening to you is optional. So some of the rules that I like to incorporate are rules that are structural in basis, so that it helps the dog start to see me acting like a leader by enforcing it and having a rule that means something. Now for a dog to be within seven feet of somebody who has a high value item like food or a bone or something like that is a way of challenging to get within seven feet of that. That's into, into the uh, what we call intimate space for dogs. So um, w one of the rules I have is when we're preparing food, the dog's not allowed to be in the kitchen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to use the escalating consequences that I teach my clients to use your body language to make the dog stay out of the kitchen and move it out of the kitchen. Now, um, I'm gonna, uh, when I first start doing this, and I'm gonna have you step one more, take one more step back, and if you can only see me or the dog, it's more important to see the dog for this, I'll tell you to come back to my face if we need to. All right, so now I wanna create a lure, or, or all right, so she's already in here. So front facing is confrontational to a dog. So if I want her to leave, I'm gonna march deliberately at her. There we go. And I'm not necessarily kicking the dog. I'm definitely not kicking the dog. All right, so she's outside, so I take one step backwards. So front facing is confrontational. So, and approaching her in a rushing fashion is a way of disagreeing. So now I take one step backwards and I pause. As soon as she crosses the threshold, then I'm rushing towards her. She's still across the, there we go. Now I'm doing this in an easy version. It seems like a waltz. We're just going back and forth. There we go. So now she didn't come in. So now I can take another step backwards. And rush at her so she needs to think, if I don't get out of his way and back up, he's going to run me over. And notice I pause when I get to here. I pause and wait for the dog to stop, be stopped moving, and then I take a step backwards here, and I stop moving. Her mouth is open right now. It tells me she's a little bit stressed. She's doing what we call dry panting. So when I move backwards, I take one step at And again, I don't want to hit the dog, but if you don't go fast enough, she will not move away. There you go. So that was preemptive on my part. She's actually respecting it. And I pause between each step. I don't just me meander multiple steps away. And my authority goes whatever direction my hips are pointing. So if I would have turned around and walked in the kitchen this way, she would have run right in. So now we've kind of communicated to her what we want her to stay out. But this is the easiest. There we go. Now she had, that was a little bit of a negative experience for her. You saw she kind of lowered her head and cowered a little bit. We don't want her to be fearful, but we want to understand that I'm going to take bold action as soon as you try to come in. and I'm not gonna let her go around me. Now, if the dog sits, I take a giant step backwards whenever they sit, because that's the way I'm saying I'm challenging you less. So now when we're doing this, this is great to do this, but it's not exactly realistic, or, or it just takes a lot of time and supervision. Well, that's part of it, is we have to help the dog practice what we want, but we can also create more of a longing to want to go in here. The first version of this is I'm having her stay out of the kitchen in the easiest version when there's, it doesn't appear that there's anything really going on in here. Now, what I usually recommend my clients do when they're doing this is when you're cooking, you're actually distracted. You're thinking about the ingredients and stirring and all the rest of that stuff, and the dog creeps in and you don't see it. Remember, you have three seconds to correct or reward your dog. So if I'm not paying attention and the dog crosses the threshold and it takes eight steps and then I correct it, it's like, oh, so you get mad when I take eight steps? The first step is when we need to correct. So a lot of times what I do is I create a stage scenario or a situation where I can help the dog practice. A great way to do this is to microwave a piece of bacon and then take the bacon out of the microwave, put it here on the counter, it smells like we're cooking. Then I start opening the drawers, and I turn the stove on, and I chop, and I open the fridge. I mimic the behavior that I would do when I'm cooking. That was better. Wait for her to stop moving, and I take a giant step backwards, and I pause. So when I, what I wanna do is I wanna pretend like I'm cooking, so I'm watching her out of the corner of my eye. I don't stare at her this time. Pretend like you're doing it. But as soon as you cross the threshold, you stop what you're doing, you rush immediately. The timing of that is super duper important. Now, and after a while, again, you'll take a step backwards and pause. 
Step backwards, pause. Don't just go like this, because that'll cause the dog to come in. Eventually, you'll be able to do that, but at first, we need to make it very clear. Now, we did this in an easy version where there's nothing in the kitchen, and the guardians are right here, and she's kind of walking away. Let's make it a little bit more challenging. So now with a whole bunch of treats on the floor, now, I, now this is real. This is a lot harder. Make sure I don't smash them. Now, normally before the session, I'm guessing if we would have done dropped a bunch of treats on the floor, she would not have stayed out of the kitchen, correct? Now, I'm just... now again, she cowered down a little bit, so I don't want to. I don't want to make it. I don't want to make her fearful of this. I just want to achieve what I want, which is to have her leave. So you might actually end up taking a step past the boundary, but normally I like to uh, stop enforcing at the boundary, and that's how I teach the dog where it is. And again, I pause between each step. So she's kind of in an action position. She, if you can see her, she's got her mouth open, which tells me she's dry panting a little bit of stress. So then I can pretend like I'm cooking. Now I'm not saying do this as a, this is a demonstration purpose of tree on the floor. You do that too. But if you <coughs> microwave your bacon and then you pretend like you're cooking, anytime she comes in, you correct and address it. And as soon as she sits her LAYs beyond the boundary, that was better. So she didn't cower that time, she did, but she did back up. We want you to learn, but we don't want it to be, it is a negative, but it's not a punishment. It's just a reaction. And, but make sure you're moving very, very briskly towards her. If you're very casual or you slow down and don't stop and she'll just, she won't move back. You have to give her that flinching experience. So then we actually, when, when we're, we're simulating our cooking, and as soon as the dog sits or lays down beyond the boundary, then I start the actual cooking. So now the dog has warmed up as we call it. And then it's practice what we want to do when it lays down. Then we do the regular cooking to the dog. It looks like it's pretty much the same thing. Then once we get done cooking and all the food and everything's put up, then the dog can come back in, but the dog won't know that it's allowed to come in. The way it'll figure that out is when we're not, when I'm in the kitchen or I cross the threshold, nobody say anything. I cross the threshold again, nobody said anything. And we go further and further in and eventually the dog's like, okay, so the coast is clear now. Now it'll take a little bit of repetition back and forth. So before you're doing your cooking, practice. Try to set it up like once or twice a day, we're gonna practice keeping the dog outside the kitchen. Other times I do this, I don't allow the dog around the carpet around the table, if you have carpet bordering your kitchen table, um, or things along those lines. So you wanna create, if you have multiple dogs, I only let one dog in the kitchen to eat at a time. The other dogs have to stay behind the boundary. And now it's gonna take us, so if she's still challenging a little bit, I might move a little bit further back, but I don't wanna shove her. I wanna just move so briskly that she moves herself back. Now this will take a little bit of practice, so you might wanna practice this like twice a day for a week or two. Now the last thing, I probably is the first thing I should have showed you, is sometimes I also like to create a longing. So if I want her to go out of the kitchen, a lot of times I like to use fun command words if you watch my videos, you know. So I like, when I do this, I like to use the word reservations. So if I want to go in the kitchen, I have to make a reservation, kind of like you would do a restaurant. So to do that, what I would do is have a treat like this, and I throw it outside the kitchen, and I say reservation. And she's going to come back in, I throw another treat outside. Reservation. So I do this a couple times, and then I would do this, I would do this before we have anything on the carpet. Uh, we're dropping or we're doing the microwave deal. And the idea is now we have a command word reservations means to go outside the kitchen and then there's a reward and I'll be waiting for the reward outside the kitchen. Um, I also do this as a version uh, to teach dogs to leave the room. I'll give you a little bit of a bonus tip. So let's say I'm in the, in the living room. I want her to leave the room. I just go like that and say the word out. So I go to every room in the house, let the dog see that uh, uh, and see me toss a treat about two or three feet outside of the room. I say the word out. I do that with two treats to every doorway in the house. And after a while I can say out, and the dog turns around and runs out the room because it means, oh, if I leave the room, I'm gonna get something. Normally we say out, we almost trip on the dog, we're upset, we're like, ah, out, and we say it as a punishment zone, and the dog doesn't like it, it's fearful. So by doing it in a positive, excuse me, a positive way, reservations just teaches the dog going out of the kitchen, so if she does creep in, you don't have to march towards her, you can say reservations when you practice enough. But also for any other room in the house, you could say uh, out, to mean out of the kitchen, the dining room, the living room. And then I also reverse it and I would maybe throw a treat in here. And when she comes in here, I would say kitchen, dining room, 
living room, bedroom. So that way I can actually have a vocabulary to tell the dog whatever it is, where it is I want them to go. What do you think about this, May? She's like, I, can, I have long hair in my eyes right now because it's winter time. I can't see very well. But this is May. Yes, and you're gonna struggle a little bit. We're gonna finish the video right now. This is May, and these are tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that likes to get in places so you can teach them how to respect an invisible line.